<sighs> can't always be just on time, right? Uh, sometimes you're gonna be late. And uh, I went all the way to the border to pick up Ollie. Amy and I switched, and the traffic along the, the I-90, I think it is, going back out of Buffalo was literally a parking lot off and on. They, it seems like every, they get, they gotta pave it, like, all the time. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. Anyway. Um, missed insider trading, and I was happy to see her get away on the front, and then rolled off, coming to the half. I couldn't understand why, and I was there when she came off the track. I literally, uh, for a, a three-hour drive, was three minutes late, and, um... I was getting to go, getting ready to go on the track to school, La Dorraine, when uh, Insider Trading came back, and you could see what had happened. I had said to Jason, uh, he had trained her with boots on, we wore bandages on her last year, I said, I just want to see if she's hitting, just take Gypsy Hill's shell, so what Gypsy Hill wears is fat wrap on his hind legs, and then if you've seen trotting boots, the outside of those boots are a hard plastic shell, and we don't often do this, but with him we did, just to keep the weight down, we put a shell on that leg. They sell them all the time. People frequently use them. And then we'll vet wrap over that shell to keep it snug to the leg. What that allows us to do is, one, protect the leg, but two, also allows us to see where the horse is hitting. You may see some scuff marks on a boot, but obviously if a, if a, front, a front foot strikes that hind leg, it's going to chew that vet wrap up. I mean, Gypsy Hill, if you ever watch closely, going back to the winter circle, his are all chewed up. He hits all over his hind shins. But... Um, it doesn't bother them anymore and those boots are, are enough protection where it doesn't they never blow up or get sore or bruised or anything so it's fine for him coming back um, you are, thank you very much thank you very much sir. little Chick-fil-A um, so with uh, insider trading I can't say that her hitting was why she made a break. I would say it was the obvious suspect, though. When you look at when you look at um, the right hind right hind shell in the vet wrap, nothing was out of place. Left hind, midway up that hind leg was chewed right right through to the shell. Now, the, oh, you don't break them. You don't break them, buddy. Um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to how we're going to address that, because to me that's pretty obviously why she made a break. She struck that either once or twice or three times, maybe a few times, and chewed that vet wrap up. Now, there's people of the of the belief you just put boots on and away you go. Well, you're not talking to one of those people because what'll happen is if you put boots on that left hind leg, what she'll do is almost certainly she'll hit that left hind leg and she'll end up finding that right front knee, and that's the last thing I want to see her doing. So, how do we? help her mechanically to get out of that left hind. Now, she just has a set of full swedges on behind. What we can do is put a set of half round half swedges. Now, they chew that swedge up pretty good, so you're only on a, on a, a track like here with rock dust on it, you're probably only gonna get two solid starts out of a half round half swedge shoe before it starts getting worn out pretty good. But we'll, what we'll likely do is put that half round half swedge on and have a little trailer on it behind um, to try and widen her out, slow her out, slow her down a little bit. Now, in the past, as a two-year-old, she did wear uh, bar shoes behind for that very reason. She would chew it herself, and it did work. My only problem with the bar shoes is right now, um, it might end up soaring her up, putting a lot of pressure on her stifles, and they're not real big and strong to begin with. Now, she did wear them at two for half of her year. Then we went to a, a full swedge. It was a little bit longer, and when we brought her back this year, just a normal full swedge. So uh, I think there's a number of things we can do. We can go back to that our bar shoe behind if we want to, and also uh, what I had what I had uh, suggested first would be go to a half round half swedge um, with a trailer on her left hind, just until we get her confidence up, just till we got her trotting a little stronger, and then maybe we can we can take that trailer off and then go to a full swedge or even go to an aluminum. But I think first things first, just to get her trotting good and get her confidence good. Uh, clearly the strength and speed was there. That was still a good mile, making a break, sitting in the middle of the track after that and going a mile in 2-1. And what Chris Lambs had told Jason was, I don't know why she made that break, but she was fine before and she was fine after. Leads me to believe she just struck that spot in her hind shin two or three times, startled herself and made a break. So, um, obviously I would have liked her to get through the qualifier and then address it in a way with a clean line. That's not going to happen. 
So I'll either take her over to the Meadows and qualify her Tuesday when I go over for Melisandre, or we'll wait and go right back with her here on Wednesday. The whole goal, I'm not too concerned. She can see the tone of my voice. I'm not too concerned because the whole goal is to have her good for the fall, right into the winter, and right into breeding season. And that is what we want for this filly. Very well-bred filly. This is sister to JL Cruz. She always was. And I think she has four or five wins to make up before we talk, start talking seriously about breeding season in the winter. So if she went out and did it right now, it would be a problem. We wouldn't have a ton of places to race her right away. So uh, we'll take this as a, as a, a chalk it up as, as a frustrating line. Um, make some shoeing, just tiny little shoeing adjustments for next week and either go to the Meadows or go to uh, right back to Northfield here with her. But either way, sound feeling good just some minor mechanics we have to work on with her nothing serious now i will tell you this uh la Durain. i told you guys every so often one of these horses comes along and this is a horse that i looked at right away and i said i told you in your video i'm not ever going to turn anybody down if they want to buy into the horses i end up not getting any of this filly and this is the type of horse that i love to have i just schooled that filly eh, lots put it that way Good chicken right there. Um, if La Rain is just good next week in a maiden at the Meadows, she has to go to the Meadows because she's coming off a break. You can't race off a break in Ohio. You can race off a break in Pennsylvania and Ontario. If she's as good next week as she was today, and I can't imagine there's a reason not to be, it would be hard for me to believe she wasn't going to win a maiden. How's that? In fact, I think we are going to have a lot of fun with La Durain from next week for a, the, at least the foreseeable future. I like this filly a lot. You know, you can tell that she was trained down from a, from a big outfit. Very polite. Does her work well. Very well trained. Again, uh, the type of filly that maybe in a bigger op operation may have lost, may have fell through the cracks. I tell you this all the time when we're at Harrisburg looking around or when I'm on on gate looking around. Show me a horse with some speed and some brakes, and those are the ones that I really gravitate towards. I've spent most of my uh, earlier career, when, when I was starting to take care of trotters and work with trotters, um, learning what works and what doesn't. First thing you want to do is know where the horse was coming from and not fall into the same traps that that particular trainer did. And although I don't know much about La Durain, uh, I could see how she was trotting the first day that we got her. We made some shoeing adjustments that I thought might help and uh, threw the hobbles on her and she was extremely strong tonight so I'm I'm pretty optimistic as we head into next week with La Durain uh, at the Meadows is where she'll likely race so that is what's gone on so far I did want to apologize to all my partners I know Joe was going to be emailing me wondering what happened to Philly and looking for uh, some sort of an explanation I hope he takes the time to watch this video because I'm not concerned at all with what I saw from insider trading today we know what happened we should be able to fix it. I don't think we can fix it 100% in one shoeing, in one week, in one run, but I think we can get to the bottom of it. I didn't see any other issues with her mechanics or her gait. Uh, Chris was surprised with the gait, with the break. So uh, when I see that, that wrap ripped up left hind, that is where we're gonna look, that is where we're gonna focus on, and that hopefully is what we're going to fix as we head into the next week. So with that, our, our day starts in a minute. Ollie and I are on our way back out tell you what when this boy turns 20 i hope he remembers what what the summer of 2023 2024 hopefully 25 and 26 looks like you know all over literally north america to this boy sitting there eating fries listen to his earphones it's a small part of me so it's a smack him. <laughs> anyway we're on our way out to the house to get his football gear He's going to go back, practice football tonight. I'm going to go drive at Northfield Park. I'm going to have to get Jason or Jason or Lauren or somebody to go pick him up and practice. It's just down the street. It's not a big deal. But right now, the first part of our day, one for two. Yes, we didn't get our girl qualified, but I suspect that won't be hard to rectify next week. And La Durain, nice feeling. Take care.